Here we go. All right. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Just getting started. Hello, Samara. Welcome, welcome. Um, it's so great to have you guys here. I'm like, I'm just blah, 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 talking a mile a minute because I'm so excited to do this tonight. Um, I've just had so many fabulous ideas and things that I wanted to share on my journey with learning about um, addictions, learning about people that have struggled with people with addictions, l learning about how far we can push ourselves and how many walls we can put up for ourselves. And <sighs> there's so many easier ways. And so I'm here to share some great things and do a super fun meditation tonight. One that this is all an experiment. So I am super grateful for you guys for being here tonight, because if this is something that's helpful, this is something that you could do with your patients. You know, the energy work is on top of this. Um, it's own thing. Energy work is, um, sorry, I'll just, I'll just mute you guys if that's okay. If you don't mind muting your, yourselves even just to make sure that Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, just while I'm recording, so there's no background noise. So um, there's things like, say, with the essential oils, for example, that I use something like grapefruit for things like uh, sugar cravings, or um, I use my copaiba oil. The body has um, endocannabinoid receptors in its body, right? And so a lot of people think that, you know, maybe cannabis would be an okay drug to have in the system because we have these cannabinoid receptors, which, you know, for some people that is true if they figure out which strain, if they figure out which, if it's the CBD, if it's whatever. But what happens is in the copaiba oil, what it has is BCP, which is beta carophosphalene. Hey, Jesse, welcome. And I'm just talking about copaiba essential oil is one of the ways to sort of um, get, get grounded here and get ready. If you have, I don't expect you to have copaiba essential oil sitting beside you, but it's when I'm talking about essential oils, getting grounded, it's a really nice way to anchor. So if we're having a craving for something, if we're having a weak moment, if we're having an angry time, if we're having a distracted time, if we have a time where we just need to focus and we want a bit of an external source to replace whatever it is that we may choose to give up this evening, um, then we can absolutely go to that oil. It's a healthy way to kind of do something good for ourselves because a lot of it is not so much leaving something behind, but maybe replacing it with a better habit or a better tool, one that works better for us, one that's a little bit healthier. Um, so the copaiba oil is, is it's got 60% BCP in it, where, oh my gosh, you have some, have you taken it under your tongue, Sabrina? So if you're having a craving for things like um, sugar, or if there's like, um, um, a really bad mood or a health thing going on or a, um, even anger, you can take it and just literally put a drop under your tongue. You can, it, it's used as bear medicine if we're doing sweats up north here. This is sort of what we do with the Aboriginal uh, communities as we use that. Um, it's a skin oil. So that's, it's like a carrier oil, the jojoba oil. It's really nice. You could mix your your copaiba oil or any kind of oil with the jojoba oil and just literally spread it on your body. You can put it on your feet. You can take a couple drops in your hand and you just literally like breathe it in, just cup and inhale over your sinuses kind of thing. So copaiba is much like getting a dose of CBD, but no THC whatsoever. And it's actually, when you're getting CBD oil, you're getting usually about 8% eight at the most CBD um, or BCP in it. And in a copaiba oil, you're getting like 60%. So you get way more of the BCP. The BCP is what's going to cause the anti-inflammatory effect. It's going to cause the nervous system to calm down. It's going to cause the digestion to repair itself. It's going to assist the body in healing. It's not going to just sort of medicate you per se, like, like taking THC per se, or cannabis in the, in that sense as well. So something really cool about essential oils, they're super powerful, right? So we can use these as an anchor, not only just as an external source to sort of help us through um, recovery, through an addiction, but it's also something that really our bodies are made to absorb and to work with. And for some people, it gives them that uh, full body relaxation, 
resets that nervous system. Take a couple drops, put it on the back of your neck even, and just breathe in. And it's very earthy. It's made from these trees from the Amazon. So it's just super grounding. And frankincense, that kind of stuff is like that too. So this is Copaiba. It's C-O-P-A-I-B-A, -A, Copaiba oil. Some people call it Copaiba, but um, I've always just called it Copaiba. And this is something that I actually, I used to order from Young Living because Copa, um, doTERRA didn't have it. Uh, but once they ended up having it, I was just super happy and am like taking it internally. It's also super good for your guts. If you have um, like a lot of really bad gut issues as far as irritable bowel, things like that. Yep, you would mix those together. Absolutely. It's an, it would be a really nice sort of lotion for anywhere. Patchouli is really good for things like alcohol cravings, recovery. Um, cedar wood will calm the mind down. There's so many good oils. Then there's all the emotions. Oils. There's so many good ones. So I encourage people to use those to ground, to anchor themselves. So you can use it before we go into meditation. You can use it after you can use it while you're struggling, but we have that trick of doing an anchor where um, I'm not sure. I don't know, if Jennifer, you probably haven't done anchoring yet, or um, I think and I don't, I might not have done it with you, Christiana, or I'm not even sure about you, Samara. Anchoring is basically, I'm sure you've done it in your past anyways, but we get to a really good emotion. So we think back to the time where we were like, F yes, I am done with this. I am going to quit this. And I did it. So we try and think of a really good time like that. You know, like I took a course and I just smashed it and I did it, or, you know, I just, I was going to get rid about doing something like that. So yeah, when we feel really good about something, we can touch an area on our body. It can be touching an ear. We try and do something simple, grabbing a wrist, grab, but we get really up into that emotion and then we touch an area and that sets an anchor in because how addiction starts is we get a dopamine response, an actual hit in our brain when something makes us feel good. So if we're going to take something to either generally a substance is to enhance a behavior or to um, escape a behavior, right? If we're going to go to a substance, it's going to be to for one of those things. I can absolutely, sorry. Yeah. You know what, actually, even if you guys want, so I have um, a course that is a two week thing that has all the PDFs of the essential oils that go for addictions. And I've got like everything from bulimia and anorexia to smoking to um, alcohol, everything. If you guys like, I could share those PDFs with you because it is pretty awesome. Um, okay, I will do that. I'll, I'll make sure I go on and make sure I have you guys. Uh, it's they're awesome. And that way you just have them all there because it's just one of the I'll share one of the fun, the well, last things about essential oils that pops into my head for smoking, you take toothpicks, and you put um, <laughs> thanks, Jesse, you put toothpicks, and you put them in a jar with a drop of cinnamon oil and black pepper oil or clove oil or even our on guard mix and you just shake it around and the toothpick absorbs the oils. And so that hand to mouth thing, you can take the toothpick and you just put it in your, in your mouth. It instantly curbs the cravings. Plus you get that all of those phytonutrients, all, all of those sort of chemical processes from those oils happening instantly to give you that hit, that hit instead. And it's so amazing. And it actually sort of repairs things instead of breaks it down. So, um, when I, when I looked at things like, um, oh, Charity's coming in, woo woo. And she's gonna be like, dang it, I just missed all the oil stuff. It's so fun. Uh, but I will make sure I, I share those PDFs with you because it, um, it is magical, the things that you can do with them, especially when you know what you're doing with them, right? But grapefruit under the tongue or copaiba under the tongue, you can kind of never go wrong with. Those two are both amazing. Hey, Charity, I'm so excited to see you. Yay, girl. This is awesome. I just finished ripping through in five minutes or less all the way essential oils can sort of help addictions. And um, I have a really great bunch of PDFs that I will share with you so that you have all the list of fabulous oils. Um, one of the ones I just shared about for um, quitting smoking is taking a little jar and putting toothpicks in it and you put a drop of your cinnamon or your on guard oil, you know, our immunity oil. I've sent Charity some oils so she knows how yummy they are. Um, and you put, you can put a little bit of coconut oil in there too, to make it sort of disperse a little bit more. And, um, you can just pull out those toothpicks whenever you're having a craving and it'll get your, 
get your system going. And I mean, even there's one that's called Slim and Sassy or Smart and Sassy in Canada. And it's like a metabolism blend. So you can take that to kind of curb cravings, balance your blood sugars and boost your metabolism all at the same time. So it's like, yeah, I'll take a vat of that, please. <laughs> so I'll send you all those guys. I'll send you all those oils uh, recommendations so you guys have them. There's a really good recipe for, um, um, for, uh, sugar too. I really like the one for sugar. So I'll make sure I send those. So when I, you guys have probably seen, um, some of sad, sad guru's work. He's a really neat yogi who say he's basically always blissed out. He says, he's like, I'm always high on life. And the way he does that is with a little bit of, um, breath work and he does meditation and he's literally so happy. Like, this is kind of how I've been feeling lately. Like, it's almost like, like better than like that, that high school party that I was at where you're just like, yeah, you know, you're so full of life. it's like, I just feel so great being connected again. And, um, you guys having this, the same sort of thing going on, getting to that point, when we go through the 12 steps for recovery from addiction, we wind up going through everything. And at the end, those 12 steps are all about enlightenment and kind of knowing that there's something bigger than us out there. And that's kind of like where, where the 12 steps really fit in. And for people, I don't under, I don't, I, I don't want to minimize any addictions because there are a lot of, you know, really big addictions out there that need more than just a little hoodoo voodoo as I call it and some essential oils you know like there's some pretty big stuff out there however our mind is the the most powerful tool right so if we can tap into that no wonder I can't see you guys if we can tap into that oh that's better um why not it's there it's free same thing with the breath work right it's something that we can just absolutely do so I am going to teach you guys a few tools with breath work to be able to tap into that DMT almost immediately. Um, that chemical that we get before we're going to die or, you know, as we're kind of falling asleep, as we are holding our breath and we are kind of getting to that point of hypoxia, our brain is able to produce some pretty amazing chemicals that we can only produce in certain dream states or near death experience. But the other way to do that is with just simple breath work. So we're going to do, I'm going to teach you guys a breath work hack to be able to kind of get through a craving. A craving is much like a contraction. So for any of my ladies that have had a baby out there, you know, it's a minute, a minute and a half most of getting through that hard breathing, those contractions, then you can play cards for five minutes. You're fine. You're like, you're literally fine between the contraction. We just have to get through this contraction state, this craving state distraction in some way. So um, a nice breathing hack, um, it, 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 it's basically doing Wim Hof's method. I don't know if you guys have, have done that before. So it's, it's, I'll, we'll do it right before we get into the meditation, but a few things that we need to really do before we decide to kick a habit is truly make that choice, right? So we have to make that choice to simply become a non-smoker. Like I am a non-smoker and you wake up that next day as a non-smoker and you have your day planned out so that you don't wake up and go for your coffee and cigarette. Like you usually do. You actually have it planned out where 9 30 first I'm doing my meditation. Now I'm going to replace that one with this next. Okay. When's the next time I usually have my weakest moments. Okay. It was my 10, 15 coffee break. That's the time where I'm either it trying to increase a behavior or escape from a behavior, right? I want to enjoy that break even more. So I'm going to go have a smoke. I want to enjoy that moment. So I'm going to go have my coffee. I want to enjoy that moment. So I'm going to go have a drink. I want to escape that moment. So I'm going to go have a cigarette. I'm going to, we always choose to sort of get out of the state that we're in. So what is it that we feel we need to cope with life? You know, like, what is it that we what is it that we have in our lives that helps us sort of feel like we're coping with life, you know? And, and if that's, if that's the case, what is it in life that we're coping with that maybe we could change so that we didn't have to feel like we were escaping from that or that we had to enhance it some way. Right. And so, yeah. And so what if it's, what if it's something like food or a relationship, right? What it, and especially with food, because this is something that is, we need it for sustenance, but how do we choose the right things to go into our body? Because unconsciously, 
I'm sure we've all been there where we wind up, we've just finished a whole bag of chips and we didn't even probably like taste it or even enjoy it because we were just sort of unconsciously eating. Or for me, I used to joke that at first I ended up when I first started emotionally eating. Yes. When I first had um, joined magnetic mind, I lost almost 30 pounds because I just heard Chris's head or Chris's voice in the back of my head being like, Jack, it was right into my hormone balancing. He's like, Jackie, that's going to disrupt your or insulin balance. Not that he'd ever say anything like that, but I had this Australian accent, which I'm not even going to try or a New Zealand accent rolling in the back of my head going, honey, just get your hand out of the pantry and go to bed. Like, <laughs> go to bed. It's 11. What do you need right now out of there? Go to bed, right? So we think about what do we need? What is it if we're going for, for that little snack? What do we need? If it's salty, it's our adrenal glands. Go to bed. If our adrenal glands are out of whack, we need to be in bed before 1030. If we're up past 11, we're going to make unconscious decisions. If we're, if we're starving all day and we're undernourishing ourselves because we're holding back for some reason, we're going to come home at four or five and we're going to chew our arm off, or we're going to eat that, that bread crust that's sitting on the counter or those cookies that were there because they're simply there without even paying attention to the fact that that was just your whole sugar count for the whole day. And now, you know, you pretty much have to kind of start over. Over because with our bodies, we, we get to a point hormonally where we're balanced out, but it takes three or four or five or seven days to get there. And once we get there, then it starts to get a little bit easier. But once we get there, that's often when we're closer to that goal. So we stop kind of doing it just like medication. So you guys know all this stuff. I'm not going to get too far into that. But with addictions, it's really interesting because how I think of it is big fish versus little fish. So if we think of, you know, something that we went to, for some reason, I brought up Sad Guru because he goes, it's stupid. An addiction is just stupid. It's not good or bad because his, his Indian friends, they're like, oh, it's so bad. I know, but I love smoking with the guys for a few hours and it's so bad. He goes, no, 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 no. It's not bad. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just stupid. <laughs> and he just already laughs. <laughs> He's like, no, really? Like, what is good about what, what is what is it's not bad it's just like what is smoking for a few hours going to do is it going to add life to you is it going to make you feel better is it going to make you smell good is you have a porsche and you're running it on vegetable oil so why are you going to do that so this this with food we have this you know this ability to be choosing to drive this porsche to run this beautiful machine to feed our mind to feed this this, you know, in make this structure of what we want. And then for some reason, not fuel it properly. Like we don't love it or something. Like we don't feel like it deserves that fuel. Like it, like we, like we expect it to run on vegetable oil when it's a premium gas vehicle, right? Like we have to sort of think about these things that I'm still running on the same vegetable oil that I would put in my my little mercury links I got when I was 16 that we used to run through fields for fun and see what we could run over. You know, I wouldn't do that with my Porsche, but I'm still putting the same crap into it. I'm still not paying attention to what's going into my mouth. I, in knowing that I was doing this as addictions thing, I ate chocolate last night and we had pizza for dinner tonight. Cause I'm like, okay, that's it. We're going out with a bang. <laughs> it's healthy eating from now on in. But you know what, we have to get to that point where we, you actually have to be able to go, F this, I am just not doing this anymore. I'm just not like, kind of like you get to that point right now with our boundaries, with clearing out our root chakra, with clearing out our sacral plexus, we all of those family boundaries, all these things are sort of shifting. And we're at a point now where we're like, okay, we're getting to solar plexus on Friday here. And this is all about personal boundaries. And this is where it's up to us what fuel we're putting in when we pull up to that gas station, or if we're just going to go to Hank's farm and continue to get the used fish, you know, fish fry oil that he's been supplying us for the last while. It's all about making that decision of what to put in. Now, if we're feeding these big fish per se, if we think about an addiction or something that we don't want, if we're feeding that fish in any way, if we're giving it, if we're giving it energy, if we're giving it power, if we're giving it anything, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So what we have to choose is that relationship with this fish that we're going to have. So in the meditation that we're going to go drop into right away, we are going to be 
Um, oh, I love you guys. This is amazing. Yes, there's no ration to addiction at all, is there? It's 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 pure, it's pure chemical. It's pure, and that chemical that has been fed and fed and fed needs to continue it, or it feels like it's going to die, right? Just like our parts personalities. And when I went into this this work with Chris, it was like all of the shamanism type work, all of the everything else that I've learned. This is this journey, this soul's journey that shamans will take you on in you go really deep in with ayahuasca, you go in really deep and you look at where, where this trauma really came from, where you started this journey. What is it that is, that is part of you that is almost like an entity. So they look at it as entities. So you know how we have our parts our parts, personalities, we always talk about, right? Mama bear, papa bear, all this kind of stuff. Well, energetically, we view it as entities. So when you first made that decision, there was something about you that thought, you know, this is a smart thing to do, or I'm going to get something out of this. I'm going to get, this is going to make me feel good. This is something I have with eating. It's usually we have no control over anything. That's the only thing we have control over. So if we have no control over our bodies and what's being put in them and what's, what's, you know, straight down from traumas to like, and I'm talking severe stuff, you know, that is no control over your own body. The only thing you can control is what you can put in for food, for water, for it, we, we choose in so many ways to control that and that be our only thing we control, right? So when we, when we kind of get into this soul's journey, when we look at it as an entity, there's even things with addictions where there's so many stories that I've heard of people where say a family member has passed this one particular case, this grandmother, grandfather had passed. And this, this son, when he was in his late teens, took on this really just, he shifted a little bit. It was like about six months after his, his grandfather had died. And he started just diving into, and, and I've seen it even sooner, three months after someone died, a month after someone died they dive into this really erratic behavior of doing all sorts of drugs, drinking like crazy, acting erratically, changing who they are, not caring anymore. Like they just, they change. And a girlfriend of mine does energetic work where she removes these entities from people where they have attached themselves in certain ways. So it's not just our own stuff, not just generational stuff, not just epigenetic stuff, but also the stuff of people that have been connected to us, even if it's not family, if they haven't crossed over, and this is just in the shamanism thing, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but if they haven't crossed over, they can latch on to a person that they can, they can get through to. And when you have, in my energy work, I learned when you have a tear in your, in your energy center. So, you know, usually people are out, out of balance. I talk all the time about being too charged up there's too much energy, not enough energy, blah, blah, blah. There can actually be tears in your energy from these really, really bad traumas that you've had, like actual tears in the energetic field. And if those tears aren't repaired, if those holes are still there, things can get in when you're sensitive, you know, like that's why rocks are so good. That's why oils are so good protection, you know, tourmaline stones, right? So like the things that we can protect, I've got goosebumps, there's, there's stuff that a lot of times people go for readings and they hear, you know, you have an entity attached. This is, this is, you know, real stuff. There's, there's a lot of people. So that's when I send them over to uh, my girlfriend or it's tr called true spirit connection. She goes and she removes the stuff and she goes, tell Jackie, I said to say, um, or what'd you say? Tell tell Jackie I said thank you because um like this you the, she did half the work I did the rest we just remove all that stuff I'm like I don't know what you do you do you I'm just gonna work on the body that's that's my thing I just you know there's stuff that will get to a point and people aren't making it past there's still something more where there's this part that just won't shift so that's a whole other class all on its own but isn't that kind of cool like not only parts integration, but 
Teal Swan will call it defragmentation. So when you when you meet with someone, look at your kids. If if they were hanging out with someone, then they'd start acting like them. They come home and they have like they, that persona. That, like you can tell who they were hanging out with that day sometimes. Or even as a kid, you may have remembered that you you acted like your friend. You didn't mean to, but you'd say things they said. You did things. We defragmentize into them. So Teal Swan will take three glasses and she'll say this is you this is when the trauma happened she'll pour some of that you know water in there and it's all different colors and then you know post-trauma you met someone else this is how this happens and so now you're this color parts of these you know we're we're parts of everything and so energetically is where we hold all of this stuff and this is why I, I find that the energetic work just kind of helps sort of really get this stuff shifting like it's just and we're so we're gonna do this really cool meditation today where we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna look at a fish tank and <laughs> I don't know if anybody has ever had a saltwater fish tank before um maybe for me it's just um oh I think I missed somebody there I lost somebody and she she's stuck in the waiting room sorry guys we're gonna uh, we're um yeah i i have this i used to be a real salt salt water addict i had a, a tank in my basement and that was just like my absolute zen time and when i think about um some of the the big fish eat little fish sort of thing the super conscious likes that metaphor because it sees how big this fish is that is kind of nattering in the back of our brain about what we would really like to let go and how and when we look at a tank you know it can be very copacetic things can be beautiful but, you know, you get the wrong fish or the wrong, like, if you have tropical fish, you get some barbs in there, they're nasty, they start beating up all the rest of the fish. You know, there's one that can just bring in a whole disease to the tank and annihilate the thing immediately. There's so much that can happen on such a quick basis. We're going to actually watch some of these big fish and little fish swim around in our fish tank today. <laughs> it's going to be really neat. I'm looking forward to it. So... <clears throat> There's just a couple more little things I want to, to talk about very quickly. So with, with addictions, it's simply something that we want to change. So this can be something really big, right? We're talking drugs, we're talking pornography, we're talking um, masturbation, we're talking about workaholism, we're talking about everything. It can be absolutely anything. It can be just eating chips. It can be sugar. It can be carbs. It can be Netflix. It can be a particular video game. It can be so many things. It can be our phone. How many of us are a little bit addicted to our phones? You know, it's not that we have to, it's not that we have to beat ourselves up for having this, but we have to choose to, today to, to let something from our life go where we're just like, you know what? I'm freaking done with this. I'm freaking done with being so so about this, I'm just, I'm just done with this part of my personality. I'm just done with this, whatever it is, I'm just done with it. It can be absolutely anything. And I want you guys to think about that first thing that kind of popped into your head. And if there's nothing that pops into your head, what I'd really like, because I know a couple people are like, um, Sarah's going to laugh. Can I, hopefully I can share Sarah. Uh, sometimes we don't really want to quit something. But I, I propose this to the group, right? I'm like, I'm just going to throw this out there. I feel like it's a really good time. This new moon is shifting everybody. And I said, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna just throw it out there. And she was like, you know what? This is fun. I, I, I'll, 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 I'll let you tell the story if you want. You can say how you were going to share space. Are you okay with that? Or do you want me to tell it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Jackie, you go ahead. You tell it great. <laughs> it was so cute. So she's like, you know, I don't really like, I really like smoking. And my husband's the same. He's he was supposed to be down here tonight, letting me do this on him in front of you guys so I could show you how I can pull his nose and make his head move. And he chickened out because he he loves smoking. He loves it. Like he just loves it. And it's his one thing where he can escape me. He can escape our kids. He has always, as since he was a kid, right? 30 years now he's been doing this and he knows it's stupid, but for him, it's, it's the money. Like, let's look at money in Canada, $20 a pack, $20 a day, $600 a month. That's what, um, 
$7,200 a year, $8,000 a year in cigarettes? What we could do with $8,000 a year? And, and as Sadhguru says, it's stupid, right? <laughs> we need to move to the States for more than one reason. If, I'm, if he's going to keep up the smoking. <laughs> uh, it's not much cheaper here, my dear. Not much cheaper here. And for eight Please? grand, you go to the Bahamas for like two weeks, man. Right? <laughs> And then if he's doing it, then I'm like, oh, I'll just have a cigarette. And then, you know, and then it leads to like, it just leads to so many other things that it's like, I have more control than this. I know I do. Right. It's just, it's it. So um, little things, right. But workaholic, that was my, that was my big thing. And I didn't think of it as a, as a, an addiction, but once I had to stop, I went through some hardcore, um, addiction stuff and otherwise as I was injured I was put on painkillers I was trying to get back to work you try all the things you try and do all the things and nothing works until you actually kind of go you know what I'm not going to be I literally said to myself I am not going to be a drug addict I am just not and I stopped and because they weren't available to me I didn't take them anymore I didn't want them anymore didn't ask for them anymore had someone brought them over would it have been really easy to just pop a couple and feel really good for a few hours without pain yeah but I you know I never I never put it out there I never it was just something that I t chose totally not to do now I've also done that with the food and it was like that was the easiest thing I ever did it's not a fight when you make that decision and you make that choice and you follow through the fighting is where we are feeling like we're not in alignment with where we want to go. And that's when we want to reduce that tension. How do we reduce that tension? It ends up that we go to the nearest and dearest and easiest thing that we are used to, especially when we're in trauma. So try and get someone in trauma to get over an addiction, try and get someone with an addiction to get rid of an addiction, never mind five addictions, because we may have way more than just one, right? So I want you guys to just either pick one. I love it. Kick, kick and sugar. Um, if you guys want, you're more than welcome to share uh, by any means of the things that you want to kick. You can keep it personal. If you don't know what you want to kick and you're just like, I'm holding space. Um, Sarah said she doesn't want to quit smoking, but she's here for the party. She is going to see what this does because subconsciously we're going to do this energy work every day. I'm going to do it all week. <laughs> I'm going to do it at 930 in the morning central time and I'm going to have it recorded and it'll be in my group. And that way, anytime anyone feels like they just need a little bit of a clearing, a little bit of a boost, what the the energy work that I'm going to be doing is a little bit of I'm going to do a bit of a uh, inner fire meditation probably tomorrow or, or, or Thursday. We're going to just do a little mini meditation each day, just getting you guys breathing, making an intention of being that non-smoker, being that being that sh um, sugar free person. I am going to be so think about your your thing you want to be, and I am going to be um, Super Mario free. I am going to be Netflix free. And this is the thing, you guys, you don't have to give it up altogether. What is comfortable for you? What is a level, you know, addiction is only what you can't manage, when you can't manage it, when you can't control it, is when we call it an addiction, when it has that hold over us that we feel like we can't control that is when it becomes that addiction point, right? See how quick that came in? Just focus, focus. Like literally, if we had it written out every day where those things would normally take us away, get us, even if it's getting distracted with other people or other people's problems, people emailing, getting distracted, going to what it is, even if it was that, that we could just keep straight in, we actually really kept focused on it as much as we did with not, imagine what we could do with it right and so we are going to see I can't wait to just kind of hear from you guys over the week at the end of the week there's a bunch more people that will be doing the replay too but I'm hoping that everyone will just kind of post in the group a little bit um, in my magnetic soul life coaching group just how it feels after how you um, how you feel anytime during the week and then next Tuesday I'm going to do kind of like a close out really big clearing and um have that sort of those replays available so people can kind of keep going as long as they want as long as they need the support because energy work it's not really just like a one and done thing you kind of need that sort of uh, a, at least with something big like this a little bit of a daily kind of just re presenting things out I love this I love this we're already in the field you guys are so amazing 
So why don't we try our little breathwork technique and get into some chemical producing um, fun all on our own. If you don't have a true choice as far as I choose to be um, smoke free, I choose to eat well, I choose health, I just choose true health. I just choose to feed my body what it needs. I choose to pay attention to what I'm consciously putting in my mouth. I choose to treat myself with love. I choose to be my true nature and purpose, you know? Um, my, all my replays are in, yeah, they're in my um, magnetic soul life coaching page. I'll tag you guys both in there to make sure that you are in there. Um, and because all my replays are in there, all the ones, all, all my stuff's in there. So you can go ahead and uh, watch away. <laughs> There's like binge watch. <laughs> get, and Facebook, right? That's another addiction. There's so many of them. There's so many. It's just, they're like little rabbit holes, right? I love it. Wow, that's powerful. You guys are so amazing. I love this. Love where we're putting our choices and so, yeah, like I say, if you, if you don't have something that you want to kind of just choose to let go, then you can absolutely just true, choose to live a, a life of true health. Um, or, you know, I, I choose to honor myself, whatever those choices are that sort of feel good to you guys. Does everybody have kind of a good intention, a good commitment to yourself, a good promise to yourself to go get into a little bit of this, um, breath work. Okay. So for no one, if anyone has not done breath work before, this is going to be a very short, um, basically induction into the meditation. And this is going to shut that fight or flight off. It's going to induce our parasympathetic nervous to start working. And it's also going to, I love this unplug, even if it's unplugged from your phone for an hour a day, Give yourself two hours of that focus time in your life, your life map or your lenses. Give yourself that focus time, right? So um, I love this. Love this, love this. And so what we want to do is, is set a, a bit of a promise up for ourselves. Just going forward over the next week, we want to feel it in every way. We want to be it in every way, and we want to be able to engage in every way. So we're going to take some deep breaths in. We're going to just do four, four timing. And the whole special thing about this breath work is called the breath retention that we're going to do. So uh, for some of you that have done the breath work with me before, we can do a root lock when we do the breath back in. And the root lock is where we basically pull our pelvic muscles up. It's like we pull our perineum up, we pull our clitoris up, we pull our anus up, shh, like this big cord is just pulling from the bottom of our, our pelvis all the way up to the top of our head when we're breathing in. So a, br a breath retention is basically when we're gonna hold our breath on the exhalation and on the inhalation. So at the end of our 4-4 four, four timing, we're just going to meditate. Um, we're just going to breathe 4-4 four, four while I'm just talking you guys through our little meditation, just getting us into our bodies then I just don't want you to be confused because what we're going to do is after our four, four breaths, we're just going to breathe out for as long as we can. So I'm going to say, we're going to take a giant exhale. We're going to just breathe out for as long as we can. And we're doing a breath retention at that end of that breath out. We're going to try and hold it for 30, 45, 60, whatever amount of time you can, as long as you can, I'm going to time it for 30 seconds. I'm going to let you know when that 30 seconds is, but I'm going to encourage you to push a little bit past that. If you can keep holding your breath for after that 30 seconds, people hold their breath for three minutes. It's crazy. Once they've been doing this for a long time, they can hold their breath for three minutes on that out breath. <clears throat> so we're going to do a really long, we're going to just do four, four breathing. We're going to do a deep exhale. We're going to hold it. You don't have to hold it for longer than 30 seconds if you're not comfortable. If before that 30 seconds, you're like, I feel like I'm going to die. I need to breathe in. What turns that nervous system off is, or on, sorry, is that thinking you're going to die. So if you can hold on for another 15 seconds, you push yourself past that, you get that chemical response. You push yourself past that next moment you feel like you have to breathe, you get that chemical response. Then 
what we do is when you feel like you have to breathe, you don't have to wait for me. You can breathe in whenever you want, okay? Or if we're stopped at 30 seconds and you want to keep going, you do it. You go, you be, you do you absolutely. What you're going to do is you're going to take a deep breath in and then you're going to hold it for as long as you can. And then you're just going to go back to normal. Yeah, is anybody home alone? Sabrina's done breath work, okay? <laughs> Are you alone, Christiana? Is Fro home? Okay. Okay. Good. So just <laughs> Nikki, are you home alone? <laughs> You're good? Okay. If not, Samara. My son's in the room, but he, he knows I'm busy, so he's okay. kind. And he at, at this point, down. if you if he saw you fall down, he'd probably just leave you and let oh you do what you're doing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, she's with Jackie. Just leave her. <laughs> I love this. So does that make sense to you guys? We're going to just do some 4-4 breathing. On my, on my um, signal, we're just going to do a deep exhale, hold it for up to a minute if we can. When you're done that deep breath and you feel the need to breathe in and you can't hold it anymore, breathe in really nice and deep and then hold it again. And then you're just going to go back to regular breathing and we're just going to go right into the meditation. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Find a safe spot as you start to kind of go back to normal. Sabrina might even sort of help keep an eye on you guys just in case. <laughs> this is it, right? Because once we start the breathing, I'm going to start also zapping you guys with my bioenergy work. And what I'm going to do tonight is give you the addictions treatment, which is basically a full alignment. And my hands are already, I don't know if you guys can see this, but they're sweating. Like I have watered like it's like it's crazy they're just whenever I'm people say like I'm ready for this energy they just turn on like these faucets it's the weirdest <laughs> it's so wild I just love it my energy is already flowing here so I'm just going to is everybody good we're all comfortable love it let's go okay we're gonna start with their breath I want you guys to just start to feel your bodies relaxing. I don't want you worrying too much about the breath. We're just going to actually connect with our breath for a few, few moments here. When we're breathing in, we're gonna take some nice deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth. And I want you to just focus on that air in your belly when you are breathing in, your belly should be feeling, filling up like a nice big beach ball. Like all the air is just entering through that diaphragm right underneath your rib cage. When you're breathing out, I want you to imagine breathing out through a big straw. And as you breathe out through that big straw, your, be your beach ball is just deflating. And I want you to just notice the breath going in through your nose, how the temperature is. Does it feel cool? Just connecting with your breath. What's that temperature of your breath going out? Does that breath feel heavy? And I want you to just breathe with me. I'm going to give you guys a count and we're just going to breathe in and out on counts of four. <clears throat> and I want you to just imagine your body relaxing with each breath out as you just listen to my voice and just try and breathe rhythmically with me. As we get into this count, just relaxing your body with every breath out. Now in through the nose, one, two, three, four, out through the mouth, one, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out. Two, 
three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. And I want you guys to keep breathing like that. Three, and out, two, three, four, and in. Good job. Keep breathing. And I want you to pay attention to your breath. You're doing amazing. The rhythm is just to keep you going. Out. Whatever you're doing is right. There's no wrong way to do it. And as you're breathing in and out, I want you to get ready to go a little faster. We're going to go for a count of two and out a count of two. And when we're breathing out, it's going to be a little more intense. So in for two, out, in, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. After the next one, we're going to do a giant exhale. Nice deep breath in. And out as long as you can. And holding on that breath out if you need to take a nice deep breath out. And hold. Hold it as long as you have to. If you have to restart, take a nice deep breath in and then out and hold it. Good. Holding as long as you can. Good. If you needed to take a deep breath, go back down, exhale, and hold it again for the last 15 seconds. If you're too heady, just breathe regularly. Just enjoying these chemical responses. I want you to just imagine living a life that you really love without these addictions, just breathing regularly. Good for you. After you take that deep breath out, you wanna take a deep breath in and hold it. Ah, that's so good. It's very difficult at first. Very difficult at first. Okay, so that was like a little practice round, okay? So we're gonna do one more so that you guys get it. We're just gonna take nice, 10 nice deep breaths. And if that's too much, I just want you to breathe. Just breathe, because it's a lot. You're getting chemical releases, you're getting shifting, you're getting emotional responses, you're getting stuff popping up. It starts to kind of, I felt stuff start to get thick and dark there as soon as the, um, as soon as the breath retention took in, it was just like, whew, it was some deep energy there. So. It was that. So we're holding as you go down. So you're breathing out, holding. And then once you're done holding and you can't hold anymore, you take a deep breath in. You hold it for as long as you can. It can be a little bit scary. It can be a little bit scary, especially after the first time. This is it. It's a big release. The yawning is, is energy releasing. That's exactly it. That's how you know you're in the field. That's I usually sneeze after a lot of people yawn. Uh, you can nod off. That's all those ways of going in the field. It is meant to scare the shit out of you in a small way. It brings out that part of you that feels like you could die. It's like, I don't trust myself. 
I don't trust myself when we can't surrender when we when we don't know how to truly surrender that when we feel we have to be in control our mind tricks us into thinking our body's never going to let us die what will happen sometimes is you will fall down <laughs> that can happen and that's why sabrina's like if you're home by yourself you can fall down because it's hypoxia. We can reduce our, like when you're going down for three minutes and you've reduced and you've held your breath on that retention, you can reduce your oxygen, your oxygen saturation level to like 50% where it's normally at 97. And they, yeah, if, if, yeah, it, it can end up being like, and if you're epileptic, if you're pregnant, you know, if the, all these things, you don't want to do a big, heavy breath retention, you want to be more focused on, um, the regular breathing, just the regular breathing. So you just, you would go cyclical or I would have you do a box breathing, that kind of thing. So when you're going through a craving though, if you need to bust out of that sort of a, a scenario where you need some good, um, yeah. So, okay. Let's not do a big, heavy breath retention for you because there are parts of you that go, yeah, actually you could die from that. So what we do, and it's perfect. What, and this is like a great example too, because a lot of people do have seizures and it's not something I always bring up in um, something like an addictions class. Cause I'm not, you know, really doing the full, full energy sessions or breath work sessions. But yeah, you just literally breathe to it literally sort of reinstates itself. Homeostasis starts to happen and you start to breathe normally. However, if you feel anything, if you're overwhelmed, if you're, it's like, this is too much, I'm not getting this, just go back to that regular breathing or box breathing. So box breathing is simply in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. So you get to do a little mini retention. Yeah. See with the, with you, Christiana, your temperature, that's how I knew you needed some energy work is your temperature will go off. Um, and that's when there's usually some things in the field that just kind of need a little bit of that repair. So that's super cool. And you'll also cold will be a response. Heat will be a response. A lot of times in a breathwork ceremony, you see people have blankets on and then you see them like ramp, like throwing them off all of a sudden, ripping off their eye masks. because They're so hot. Like it just, it moves stuff through you that's breath work is made to do that on a chemical level so it's huge like it's really big stuff so i'm not joking it works for a craving so if you do that it just that one round like five minutes of just the cyclical breathing speed it up a little bit go into your retention hold it then breathe in hold it and then just breathe normally if you could only hold it for like 10, 15 seconds, you can come back down into that breath retention and keep holding. So if you were holding and it was too much, you'd be holding, you'd be like, you hold it and then you breathe out again as big as you can. And you just continue on it for that minute. Just try and sort of hold it as long as you can. But generally I start at like 30 seconds with people. So this is a big one just because you guys are all like, you know, you're, you're, you're so far into this work already. I knew that you'd be able to grasp that. So that's a big one for addictions for cravings. So let's, let's take um, a gentler approach. We're going to go in with some, um, some nice, gentle uh, box breathing. We're going to induce uh, a nice state for everyone. Now that you've all had this little taste of how to get through a contraction or a craving or a reactive place where we want to just be able to step out of our skin for a moment and not go to those things that we normally would think about doing a little bit of breath work think about doing something really good for yourself replace it with a habit that you could that you could create so if it's something like smoking maybe now we need to replace it with cooking or if it's watching Netflix, maybe we need to replace it with getting outside. A lot of times smoking and things like that, it's air we need. We think like, I just need some air. That's what I actually need, right? Or even food. Sometimes I just need some water sometimes. So think about what you need instead. What is your body trying to tell you? And in this meditation, we're going to go into that a little bit. We're going to go ask ourselves some questions right now. We're going to go figure out where some of these things came from in the first place. And we are just going to enjoy the little journey and go and look at our fish tank. So let's close our eyes. We will get into as comfortable of a position as you guys can. And I'm just going to have you doing some gentle breathing. Actually, no, a silent breath is what's going to happen here instead of the box breathing. I feel like this is important. So 
if we find that the thoughts are getting too much for us, if we are feeling unsafe, if we are feeling too heady, what I want you guys to do is a silent breath or two. What a deer does is when it comes out of home, it comes out of that fight or flight response, it's taken these still breaths and it all of a sudden takes a nice deep breath again and starts breathing. That's what switches the vagus, off, vagus nerve off for them so they can go back to drinking and eating so they don't just constantly think someone's going to kill them. Because imagine a cat if they were always in fight or flight, like they're bad enough as it is, right? If they never just were able to just breathe and calm down. They, they would wind up being crazy. So we would much be the same. And sometimes we are, right? So we need to breathe. And a silent breath is a way to silent these thoughts, silence some of these thoughts. So if we're in meditation, if you guys just need a moment and the thoughts are coming too much, or if they feel too big, or if you're finding monkey brain kicking in, I want you to take a silent breath. I promise I won't keep you much longer, 10, 15 minutes at the most, and then, then you're free silent we're going to silent the monkey brain by taking two silent breaths so what that is is purely a silent breath you know if you were hiding in the forest from your brother's gun like trying to hunt you down with an air gun you're not going to make a sound you're going to be absolutely silent i want you to try and take two silent breaths when you feel those thoughts coming through so that actually allows that thought to release so when you feel a thought coming on literally just allow yourself to take those two silent breaths where you can't hear yourself breathe. And then go back to just regular breathing and just connect with your breath. So we'll start with those two silent breaths. And then I just want you guys to be able to picture this white light for a moment. This white light that is shining, when you look up, it's, it's actually the aquarium light. You actually, you're, you are the aquarium. You can see the aquarium though, from, from this outer point of view. And I want you to imagine what your very own aquarium would look like. I feel like salt water with finding, finding Nemo and Dory and all the, the anemones. We're gonna think about these rock structures that are the roots, you know, some of the, imagine what grandma and grandpa anemone or rocks look like. Maybe it's some coral in the bank background. Maybe there's a ship. This tank can be as big as it needs to be or as small as it needs to be. And I want you to just imagine for a moment, the most, orchestrated beautiful tank one that you have spent 30 40 50 years cultivating every little trip you went on you got a new piece of coral or a starfish or a, a little archive or souvenir and you put it in your fish tank and i want you to just focus on your breath and notice this fish tank light feels so warm in fact if you move something the fish tank light is what actually sort of fills any space. And I want you to imagine the fish tank light that you have, what color it is above your head. I feel like sunshine, almost as if it would ripple through the ocean. And I want you to, for just a moment, look around that tank and know that whatever is safe to come up today will come up and whatever isn't can just kind of remain in the back of the tank behind some of those bigger rocks and pieces of coral that have been in place. And some of those fish, they don't need to come out today. But I want you to just imagine what your fish tank would feel like and what it would look like. Knowing that you are the fish tank, you are this beautiful aquarium. And I want you to think about this aquarium having all of your thoughts, all of your energy going into it over the last while. And think about the water experiment that Dr. Yamamoto did where 
The water itself was told that it was ugly or if it was beautiful. And I want you to notice for a moment what some of those water molecules might look like, what some of those little scars in the tank might be. If your body was an energy center and inside that energy center was all water, would there be some water molecules or some cells that might have been told some stories or maybe even told some stories more than once that were believed into actually making their own little ornament in the tank somehow. It's like a no fishing sign. It doesn't really belong there, but it it's there nonetheless, and it's been growing some algae and it's it's in there. Yeah, I saw that darkness happen in that water. And there's this magic dose and, and light is what really heals that bacterial balance in water. And so there's this remedy and I want you to just know right now in your own fish tank, what this remedy is that brings a little bit more of that bacterial stabilization happening where, you know, we might've brought a fish in or maybe we put an ornament in there. We let someone park their ornament in our tank and geez, you know, it blew the whole thing out of the water with what it brought in there. And there's a really simple remedy. You might need to go to the pet store for it. There might be a, a worker there that has the answer for you. I can tell you right now, it's in a bottle. You can put it in, but maybe it's someone you need to ask for help right now. Maybe it's someone that's reached out to you before, or maybe somebody that's even gone through this, or maybe it's someone who's going through this that you know you can help and you have to have a little conversation with this ornament or this fish or this whatever you decided to bring home and park in your tank. You're just going to reestablish the relationship here because you may have allowed it in in your weaker moments and your people pleasing moments. You may have allowed it in when you had room for storage because there was a lot of holes in there and you're just willing to fill up. I mean, you've got the space, right? But maybe it turned out to be kind of toxic or maybe you don't want it in there anymore. Maybe it can go into someone else's tank that needs that amount of algae. Maybe they have the fish that's going to eat all that algae. Maybe you just need to buy a shrimp. They enjoy eating that algae. <laughs> Just like Jacques from Finding Nemo, he's coming in and he's a cleanup crew. There's a lot of cleanup crew. I want you to engage that cleanup crew. What does it look like for you right now? What does that cleanup crew look like? Who are your Jacques? Who can be coming in to help you, singing you a song, reminding you that you're the princess in Disney and that it's all inside of you? I want you to just imagine some of those ornaments that have been set up. You don't even need to know who they are, what they are. In Superconscious, we're just going to ask all of these little ornaments that have taken part, all these little decorations that we've brought in to sort of make the place look prettier or maybe thought it was a good idea at the time, but it's just kind of stupid. Sometimes like those ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends that we had. Sometimes they still have space. Sometimes they, they even energetically, they're leaving their residue behind. Even after you took that ornament out, look at that hole in the gravel still. Let that light come around and let your cleanup crew start to move in. I want you to just, if nothing else, feel that light. Start to grow the most beautiful bacteria when you give it this Beautiful instruction. I'm going to take care of you now. I'm going to go get my little suction duction thing and I'm going to put it in the gravel and I'm going to start cleaning. And I want you to just imagine if you've ever cleaned a fish tank, what it looks like to stick your siphon in there and have it have all the gravel just gurgitating on the bottom and all this shit just flows right out the siphon into a big pail of mucky water. We're going to do a bit of a water change, but we're only going to do 
maybe half a tank of water change. If you do over 50%, you can have a bacteria bloom in the other way. So we're just gonna do, you know, about a 50% water change right now. And we're gonna allow that gravel to be our root chakra, to be our feet, our legs. We're gonna just allow that stuff to be settled in. And I want you to notice that as we take out about half of that water, we're actually bringing life back to some of those things. They're not drowning in muck anymore. They've just been looking for clean water. They've just wanted the bacterial environment to support them. They've just wanted the supports in place. They've been trying to sort of tell you by creating all sorts of signals and signs to the point where the water was just out of balance. And you went, okay, I got it. Sometimes it needs to turn green before I remember to do the water change, but I'm going to do it. And I want you to imagine right now this beautiful, beautiful waterfall, this aquifer pouring this fresh spring water, salt water, any kind of water, whatever water, the most perfectly balanced water of new things that you can instill into your fish tank. With all of these new habits, what new things are coming in with this water right now that you could do to make yourself get that dopamine hit, get that oxytocin output, laughing with a friend, going outside, getting a puppy, getting a fish tank. <laughs> What can we do to bring ourselves this happiness, to honor ourselves? Sometimes it's just get out of your own way. Just go out there and let people see this beautiful tank you've been cultivating for 50 years. Look at that piece of coral in there that some people have never even seen before that's starting to glow with this new oxygen and this new light that's coming down from above with this beautiful water it's actually lighting up like you've never felt before in your body in your in your mind it's like it's connected I want you to connect to your breath again and just allow those thoughts to come to you these new ideas these things that you can literally replace these old habits that are just stupid anyways. They're just, they're just wasting time. They're just costing money. They're just taking a portion, putting fry, fry oil in it. What did it just feel? What it feels like to get the premium fuel, the premium water, the perfect the perfect bacterial balance. I want you to notice the colors that start lighting up in your tank and some of the fish that are feeling safe to come and swim. And for a moment, we're gonna look at the fish, the ornament, the structure that represents the addiction, the thing that you want to just see leave. The thing that you're just ready to pass on to someone else, to share. Maybe it's, it doesn't need to come out, but some negotiations are in order and some little changes. Maybe this fish can be put in its own little fishbowl. Maybe it needs a solitary tank. Maybe it just doesn't get along well with the other fish. Maybe it's an ornament that needs to be passed on. I want you for a moment to just imagine what that was that you stuck in your tank for whatever reason. And 
And I want you to notice what kind of lesson it's given you. And I want you to notice that it's just something in the tank. It's not the tank itself. As we open your crown chakra, we're going to allow this intuition. We're going to allow this healing. We're going to allow this greater knowing and this greater knowledge to finally be able to reach our inner soul. And I want that light, that water to just continue. The most beautiful thing is this water is still continuing in it and it will never overflow your tank. It's just going to simply recalibrate every water molecule in that tank so that you no longer even have to really think about it. It's simply being recalibrated. And I want you to right now feel that pressure in your third eye as you allow the superconscious field to communicate with you And I want you to go back into the event where you first chose to treat yourself in this way where you maybe chose to enhance behavior. Maybe you chose to escape a behavior, just whatever is safe. Remember the tank is recalibrating. You're grounded now. There's a siphon that's taking out all the dark, mucky, water and this ever-flowing source is coming through just allowing that third eye right now if your monkey brain is going do those silent silent breaths just to coming back to your breath breathing in and out releasing with every breath out allowing I'm going to pull some things out of the third eye here. We're just going to open that up. Let that pineal gland start to contract. This is just balancing out your energy fields right now, my feet are tingling, my whole body is right now. These are so strong. There is so much strength here. There is so much warrior goddess power in here right now. And super conscious, I want you to just tag any of those events, any of those emotions that go along with the, those events where we went into that first time of making that decision. And we're just going to forgive ourselves for that. We're going to let go of that shame. We're going to let go of that fear that we felt. That thinking we would look cool, that thinking we would be long, that thinking we would Be able to feel normal like everybody else. I want you to just feel that for a moment. And super conscious, we're going to tag and treat all of that and do a massive change history right now. I feel the real need to go through this throat chakra where instead of saying what we felt, instead of voicing what we felt, we just literally shoved it down, whatever it was. 
we packed things on top. We made sure that none of those voices were going to get out. And I want you to just feel that right now. Allowing your throat chakra to just open. Ooh, there you go. And balancing. Clearing and balancing that third eye, that throat chakra. And I'm holding your heart space right now. My heart chakra is literally aching like someone is just breaking it. And every time that heart broke, there was a crack in there that allowed, allowed a little more darkness in. And we're just going to allow that to shift right now. I want you to just get back into your, into your being the aquarium, feeling that water, recalibrating, filling your body, healing those cracks, healing that heart. Just gonna bring a little energy in here. You might feel a little tingling into the arms, into each fingertip. And we're just going to pull some of this old stuff out as the water, as the light. I feel like it's this golden shimmering, not even golden. It's like so many colors in one. It's like a rainbow disco ball of light just around in this water. Just filling, transmuting, clearing, repairing, healing all of your cells from the inside out. Feeling this tank recalibrating, I want you to know all of these beautiful colors coming out. I want you to see all these beautiful fish coming out. And I want you to maybe notice how this addiction ornament fish, whatever this little thing looked like in your tank, I want you to just notice, maybe it's still, maybe it's the gravel, maybe it's something that needs to really be dug up, have some boiling water poured on it and just, there's a lot of repair down here in this heart chakra, just allowing, I just want you to allow this for just a moment. Feeling that energy into your heart, just allowing. There we go. In Superconscious, we're just going to go to any of these emotions, any of these emotions we've been trying to keep down. Anytime that fear comes up, anytime that anxiety comes up, anxiety with that fear of the unknown, the fear of can I do it, the fear of I've done this before, the fear of I'm not going to be able to. Just, we're just going to tag and treat all those. Do massive change history. Knowing our thoughts affect all our emotions. Knowing our thoughts and our feelings have planted what is in that tank. I want you to notice the tank that you're now creating. The tank that this water has now calibrated. I want you to notice some of the colors in there. I want you to notice some of the new growth that's starting to happen. The seeds that you've planted, the coral slips you've been able to borrow from other fish tank owners that are clean and cleared, not from those back alley guys anymore. Nothing that's gonna wreck your tank. You're not taking any risks. You're only, you're vetting all of the fish that are gonna come in now. You're vetting all of those ornaments. You're gonna be cleaning and clearing them before they can be really particular about what kind of tank you're designing. People are going to be coming to see this tank. People are going to be in awe of this things created in this tank that people have never even seen before. 
And they're going to come and see this tank. What are you going to put in there for them to see? And I want you to just look at these beautiful fish that are starting to come out. Now I see a lobster. This is amazing. And I want you to pay attention to some of these critters and creatures that are coming out. Some of them may be real, some of them may not. As we get down into these roots, I'm going to go down into that solar plexus right now. And I'm just going to finish clearing out for the last two minutes here. Your solar plexus, the sacral chakra, the root, it's a little sludgy in this tank. So we're just going to go stick our siphon back in. And we're going to go around and make sure there's no worms crawling around under those rocks. There's lots of parasites that like to kind of hide out under there where we just want a nice clean tank for everybody to come see this week. We're, we're going to start showing it off right away. We're actually going to do the unveiling. It's like everybody's going to be able to come and see this tank. What does yours look like? No more toxic algae blooms. We're going to have some beautiful corals. I want you to picture them. If they were fish, what would they say? If they were, are they getting along? Are they swimming in schools? Did you have fish that could now make other fish make other schools because we removed that one and put them in the isolation tank? What did you do to make this beautiful shift and let this tank just grow and bloom like it needed to? Maybe someone's just been overfeeding. That can cause the biggest toxic bloom, you know? Maybe it's intermittent fasting. Maybe it was that. You know, these things are going to come into your field right now. What are these things that really created this tank that everybody is going to be able to come and, and you can actually have enough coral to give them all the pieces that go with it? And we're just going to breathe. Take a couple nice deep breaths and admire this tank. Watch the suction work to just take out any of these little buggies. Let them go into that big pail of funky water. And we're just gonna let our tank recalibrate to the most beautiful, clear, crystalline, colorful, peaceful for all to come and enjoy aquarium. And I want you to just imagine your pelvic muscles just relaxing right now. Just releasing them and allowing your tailbone to grow roots underneath your fish tank that are just going to allow any more of that gook. Once you've finished cleaning, you're going to put everything away. You're going to take your nice cloth and and, and, and get the tank all cleaned up from your outer point of view. Maybe you're just the caretaker. You're gonna allow everybody to come and see the real you, the real tank you started growing years and years and years ago. All those seeds that just took this amount of years to grow, this amount of light, this amount of overfeeding, this amount of starvation, this amount of love, this amount of hate, this amount of fear, this amount of guilt, and this amount of shame. It's needed at all. And it's all beautiful because it's completely unique to you. And I want you to allow anything else in that tank to simply get a promotion, put it in the isolation tank. Maybe you're just going to flush something. I want you to just picture the recalibration of your tank, picture embodying peace, picture choosing to be that person without that imbalance in the tank anymore. You owe it to yourself because you cannot be your fullest creation at yourself if you are running on the fuel that you used to feed your lemon of a car. We have upgraded into new versions. And super conscious, I want you to just help us move through the energy systems, the organ systems, releasing anything else from the body that's toxic. 
our lungs are capable of removing 70% of toxins from our body. Let's just breathe for a few more moments together. Breathing in peace and love and breathing out imbalance and pain. Breathing in strength and wisdom. And breathing out our healing energy that we have to share with the world. From a full cut from a tank that's just got this beautiful filtration system. You look back now and it's just this beautiful system. It's all working as it should. It's got a new filter. It's all replaced. The gravel is clean. The fish are getting along. We've reconfigured, we've recalibrated. And this root system that's going down deep into Mother Earth, straight from our tailbone, is going to carry anything else out that comes up in this next week or two as we commit to ourselves to really give this a go, to really say I'm worth it, to really say I need a clean vessel to do this work and to be the person I want to be, to get these dopamine hits all day long, to be a happy maniac on a mission and be able to stay focused on this true creative energy without any of this pain and suffering holding us back. We're going to tag and treat any of the energy centers, anything else that needs. Do a massive change history on that. I'm just removing some things from the lower sacral plexus and um, root. We've got a lot of traumas in here. So just take a couple nice deep breaths. I'm just going to finish just cleaning and clearing this all out. And you guys can come back to me whenever you are ready. You guys are so amazing. You are so amazing. I didn't know what we were going to do with that fish tank. I just knew we needed to go there. So I appreciate you allowing me to just um, guide you guys through that and allowing your fields to play in mine. I'm just, there's a few things I want to just kind of keep removing from some fields here. So I'm just going to um, stay here with you guys. And my hands are vibrating like I have never felt before. Like this is like, it's like there's guitar strings going off in my fingers right now. This is, it makes me want to cry. Like it's just, this is just beautiful. There's just, I just feel a few more sludgy areas. So I would love to welcome you guys to just share if there's anything you wanted to share, if you didn't, um, I don't feel that pain in my heart anymore, but I feel all these tears releasing. So there's a, there's like this, this one spot that's in the shoulder blade, it's beside the shoulder blade in between the shoulder blade and the spine. And it's not, it's like under the shoulder blade. And that's that little heart center. That's that little heart chakra. And when people's hearts have been broken, it's like, I feel, it's like it it's just this feeling and it's your heartbreak like it is it's the heartbreaking and and so when you know when there's just um so much in that energy center we can literally feel it on a physical level so it's just it's 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 shoot it's in there again so we're just so i'm just gonna keep tuning and turning i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna let you um suzanne if you want to share i didn't um you are not off mute i muted some of you so please unmute yourselves share away while i just finished tuning you in here i'd love to hear from you guys how did you do wow it was freaking amazing i felt such joy now for the last three, four years, I've had this pain between the shoulder blades you've been talking about as recently as a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's very real. It's your past. Good. It's the heart that has to keep breaking over and over again. Because what happens is as you ascend to that enlightenment, the heart is always gonna break because you're working with the world, okay? Oh, but you know what I'm saying? But the, the pain can um, be neutralized. Um, and you work on yourself every day. That's why you need so much time on yourself 
to work with others. So that is a reality and it doesn't really completely go away. But if you're into this work, um, it's all good. It's, it's all part of it. That's my experience anyway. I don't know how you all feel, but in the last few weeks, it's been like, I'm so grateful for this, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just felt okay. so much joy. I can actually say there was very little pain this time around. Thank you so much, divine light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> thank I you. can't even, like, I can't even explain because I went from seeing this finding Nemo tank to them being lost in the ocean to this toxic sludge. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's like intense, intense stuff. You guys are amazing. Amazing. Christiana, I know you haven't done a lot of recode. So this was probably this was a big one. And, and I told her today, I'm like, just hop on if you want. It's a big one and not for addictions or anything, just to kind of get the meditation in and to get into the field and just move some stuff, get the energy balance work. I'm, I keep a few people in my thoughts as I'm doing it. So yeah. Where did you do? Okay. <laughs> I I'm, I'm still here. Holy. I, thank you. <laughs> you know, the, the, um, the two biggest things for me, I think, were um, the throat. As you were doing that, the back of my neck was hot and the rest of me was like freezing cold and shivering. <laughs> <laughs> but like the back of my neck was hot. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> that was literally where my hand was. And it's hot right now. Just <laughs> thinking about that. So we're just going to keep holding. But it was like a, whew, like a wave kind of opening up all of a sudden. That was really cool around the throat. I don't know if that was like a, a group thing. You guys are so neat. And then uh, it was the heartbreaking. Uh, I've had a very, very hard last three years and I haven't done much hard work. And so I really, really appreciated that. I am so grateful that you were here to do that. Thanks. Yeah, that was, it was intense. Like sometimes the, the pain that you can feel from emotional things is physical. Like it's really, it really is. I, yeah, I'm so proud of you for doing this. <laughs> so good. So good. Okay, I need 10 more. Just, just letting you know. Yes. Okay. That's why I'm like, oh, we'll get you set up anything you need. How about, uh, and did anybody else want to share? You guys are just welcome to hop on. Charity, please hop on. How are you doing, love? Oh my gosh, I've ne I have never done breath work. That was my first time with that too. And I was just like, wow. And, um, and then the meditation, I just, the tears just were streaming down oh. my face. I saw like, I'm still overwhelmed. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And then I felt myself as the tank and the water. And I just, as you were flushing, it was just, I saw this clear, beautiful, water and it just felt so refreshing and so renewing and and letting go of that ornament it was oh. just you know putting it in another tank and right. and uh it just and it was just so beautiful i just i have no words it's probably one of the best recodes i've ever had so oh, thank you're you amazing you're amazing thank you and, and i didn't know for sure if i was going to do recode in there if it was just going to sort of be meditation but i knew you guys were ready for it. And I just felt it coming up to be tagged and treated. And it just uh, felt really good. Felt really good. Oh, I love you. I'm so glad you came tonight. Like, oh, this means so much to me, you guys. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm excited for people to be able to try it on replay too. So far, the feedback I've been getting is the energy work with the replays works really good too. So I'm just, um, I'm just really hopeful that this will um, work. I'm going to leave this meditation up on my group as well so that um, anyone can go and sort of rewatch if you want to, too, or if you want to try something like that, even with your patients, I mean, go for it. <laughs> Anything that's mine is yours. You know, I always, um, I always share with you guys. Um, I'm just, I have so much love for you all because it, this was not an easy thing to go into. And um, I just really appreciate your honesty because if it's too much, if it, if there's something you feel like would be better too, I always, always appreciate so much feedback. So I just, I got to keep zapping here. You guys keep sharing if you want. I know it's late. Hop off if you need to, by any means, by any means. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I love you guys. I love Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm, love you yes. much. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful group. Thanks. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. Oh. Love you, buddy.
you guys are amazing. Thank you. I'll keep going tonight. So I'm going to end up tuning things up. And at 930 every day, I'm giving another little mini tune up. So this will just keep this energy going. I'm going to, if you need to message, if you're finding things are too much, please message me, reach out. Um, if you need a little one-on-one uh, -on -one time or anything, if you have any questions, I am totally here to answer them always. You guys know that. And I also have a group session in the morning too. So if anybody needs some extra time, we're going to go diving into some mother stuff tomorrow morning. So <laughs> that should be fun. <laughs> Jackie, what time is that, Jackie? That is at 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Uh, or sorry, 10 a.m. Eastern and um 8 p 8 a.m pacific yes okay. yeah. so yeah. that just, is yeah I'm, just, and, <clears throat> I'm still a little bit taken out of it in. so are you okay i'm a little yeah I, actually yeah I'm, I'm still processing it's a lot this was a lot but so beautiful that like everyone else i just can add on to everybody what everyone else said it's just unbelievable it's like like it. yeah just absolutely beautiful jackie just absolutely beautiful so my eastern, eastern time what is that time tomorrow because i would like to attend eastern time is so nine o'clock or eight or sorry ten o'clock or nine thirty eleven o'clock Eastern time okay, is going to be the group. 11 o'clock. I totally screwed that up. Eastern That's time. Yeah. My time. Eastern time. 11. Time. Cool. Yes. And, and what is at, that again? At 1030, the same link, this one. Yes, absolutely. Christiane, you go right ahead. I'll talk with you later. Um, I'm, I'll hop off right away to you guys. I, I'm so sorry for keeping you so long. Um, okay. The I'm doing the mini meditation at 1030 your time in the morning. So you can even hop on early, do the little mini meditation and stay for the group. You're talking if you want, to me or, now. Are you talking I to am, me? yes. Or to everybody um, okay, tomorrow cool. morning. Before. Yeah, 10, 1030, you said, yeah? Yes. So yeah, just this week, I'm going to do the 1030 meditations in the morning just to put them out there. So they will be on my page. You can hop on live, but I don't expect anyone to. I'm just going to record it no matter what with everybody in my intention that wants to receive it. And um, so anyone that allows will be able to just access them anytime throughout the day. So you have little oh. mini, mini sessions to keep you clear and going forward and what you want to choose. Yeah, so awesome. So amazing. <laughs> I love you all so much. All right. I am going to stop the recording and I You're a good am thing, Jackie. You're a good thing. Oh, you guys you are all good things. 